Live Volcano High loaded, check. PS4 controller, check. Bottle of whiskey, double check. Let's do this. So, a demo of Goodbye Volcano High, a game that I've been anticipating for quite some time now, was released by developer Co-op during Ludo Narrative Con between May 4th and May 8th. I think if you're familiar with this channel, or indeed have clicked on this video, you probably don't need an introduction to the game or its premise, but just in case you need to be brought up to speed, here's the elevator pitch. It's a Choices Matter game with rhythm game elements about anthropomorphic dinosaurs contending with the revelation that a meteor will crash into Earth and cause a world-ending catastrophe in a little under or over a year. You play as Fang, a non-binary pterodactyl with punk rock aspirations. You must figure out how to make the most of the time they have left. Do they find friendship? Find love? Find themselves? The choice is yours. A trailer of this game made a splash during a Sony State of Play in 2020, but it's been stuck in development hell for three years, owing to a variety of factors, not least of which being firing and replacing the lead writer, narrative reboots, a global pandemic, a mission statement by co-op to avoid crunch time, among most likely a few other things that I'm not privy to. Trailers on the game's development have been fairly sparse since the initial trailer back in 2020 until they broke the streak in December of 2022 and February of 2023. Unless you were fortunate enough to go to PAX East back in March, I believe this is the first demo this entire time that's been released to be enjoyed by the unwashed masses. And as someone who's been interested in this game since its initial announcement, my talons have been flexed in anticipation of it for quite some time. I reached out to my community to gauge interest in whether or not a video of my two cents was something that people would be interested in. About 10 people responded. Not a lot in a vacuum, but that accounts for about a tenth of my subscribers so far. And when I consider that they likely have other notifications to contend with, I think at this stage of the game I would consider that a fairly ample sample size. So I'm going to take a couple moments today to discuss my experiences with the demo. I had a chance to play it through it a couple times and I wanted to broach my ideas on the matter. I have some housekeeping to do before I begin. This video acknowledges the recent unfortunate news of Goodbye Volcano High's delay, being pushed back to a release on August 29th, 2023. I think it is unfortunate, but ultimately for the best, for reasons we'll soon get into. We're going to begin, as I'm so wont to do, with a brief recap. You might know the drill by now, here's a timestamp if you'd prefer to avoid that part of the video. But I figure I ought to shed light on the subject for people who missed their shot to download this demo for themselves. Limited releases like this make clowns of us all. Our story begins with a group of dinosaurs congregating over beers, bonfire, and pizza on the beach. So far it seems the stage is set for a pretty solid piss up, and the mood is pretty somber as they all deliberate whether or not to burn a yearbook. Written on its surface, the words, Goodbye Volcano High. The decision is yours ultimately, but after making it we flash back to 8 months prior, where we get some insight into our protagonists as they tune their guitar. A short rhythm section ensues. As we send someone named LJ a demo for a song for an upcoming gig, we see texts from friends of Fang, Stella and Trish, and we have a brief conversation with Fang's brother, Nacer. The time has apparently passed for us to get a ride from him, but he doesn't leave before he cracks a couple of jokes and lets us know that breakfast is downstairs. LJ replies and informs us that she's into the demo. If you take the time to go through Fang's texts, you nosy scoundrel, you see this is apparently the first success Fang has had with LJ in quite a while and that they've been proactively trying to make a breakthrough for quite some time. So we end up at school, where we're greeted by Fang's friend Trish. She comments on Fang's recent change in hair and info dumps about her time in a summer camp that she spent in close contact with insects, not least of which being an onocophora she's dubbed Mango. Fang is a little less than bowled over about the bug situation, but Trish says some interesting things about nature being informed by causal relationships before Fang, with the practiced ease of someone who's had to do this many times before, pivots the conversation back to the original matter of their summer glow up, and depending on your choices, the matter of LJ liking the demo. But Nair Siren goes off that throws the conversation into disarray. We go to class where we meet the third member of Worm Drama, Reed, who talks to Naomi, a parasaurolophus, about an upcoming L and L camp. We talk to Reed briefly, but class begins shortly afterwards. A discussion about future career paths is initiated and ignored as Fang draws a logo for the band. You're given some input into how it looks. The whole situation is pretty dank, but Fang isn't able to send the logo to their friends because of issues relating to cell phone interference, which is decidedly less dank. Naomi takes this revelation to talk about how her mom's transistor radio is able to pick up on a frequency that's disabling cell phone signals. I like that Naomi's mom is interested in that stuff. Kind of like Dale Gribble, or Paris Hilton. Naomi asks Fang to talk on their way out of class, and if you decide to be a decent person and give her the time of day, she apologizes for sandbagging you during class. 
She puts her foot in her mouth a couple of other times, mind you, but she appears to at least be trying to befriend Fan, and the effort, at least for my part, is not going unnoticed. Entering the music room, Fang seems to be a little out of the loop between Trisha's bug camp enthusiasm and Reed's l and module, but Fang brings them up to speed on the LJ situation and plays them a song, which cues another rhythm section. Reed and Trish seem to be debating whether or not it really sounds like them, and a brief argument ensues that Fang hopes to resolve when they can next meet for practice. Trish seems to be a little tied up with a project with Rosa, mentioning that bugs are growing smaller and nobody knows why, a nice little hint towards our early conversation about causal relationships in nature. Trish and Reed leave Fang alone with their guitar in the music room, and the demo ends. This demo encompasses give or take about a half hour depending on if you take your time and see the voice lines through to the end. I won't lie and say I wasn't hoping for about an hour long demo, but I'm going to assume the plot has a lot of gap and go shortly after where we leave off, so I'm content to look the other way for now. I think that's about all I can say as a part of a strict story recap, but I think the demo we got left us with quite a bit of gristle to chew on, and I intend to do so. We're going to start with a brief discussion of what I might say is the more active element of the Biovolcano High's gameplay so far, but that being the rhythm sections. I think I would describe my tenure with rhythm sections as functional. I would give myself a B in terms of my acumen with rhythm games in general, I think. Goodbye Volcano High is fairly forgiving for folks of similar caliber. I was under the impression on my first playthrough that you would need to hit those notes on beat, but I later discovered that you could hold the control sticks down in whichever direction and you could still hit those notes fairly reliably. You'd still need to hit the X buttons on beat, mind you, but I don't think that's an insurmountable task as long as you're paying attention to the cues. I also think I might be in my own head on this one anyway. I've heard tell through the grapevine that rhythm sections in Dubai Volcano High are not currently linked to story progression, which is a bit of a relief since I don't know if I like the idea of needing to save scum in a game that's more of a story-driven experience on its label because of a skill issue. I don't really believe it matters anyway because even though rhythm games aren't really my cup of joe, I still had fun with the system once I knew more about the way it worked. People that want an additional challenge could try to do everything on beat like I initially thought was the case. Fans of more casual fare can hold down the sticks and functionally coast. There's not a huge barrier to entry such that would require, like, a difficulty selection at the start or something, and I greatly appreciate that. The music is done by Dabu, co-op's in-house audio director, whom you may know from their work on Dwarf Fortress, and Common Holly, a musician from Montreal. I wouldn't say indie rock is my go-to genre necessarily, but I personally find the music sections thus far pleasant to listen to and neatly complimentary of the gameplay. That's probably more of a matter of personal taste though, so your mileage may vary. So that's my thought on the active gameplay of Goodbye Volcano High. People might be inclined to think that there isn't much to talk about in regards to passive gameplay, but no. Goodbye Volcano High does a couple of interesting things in regards to how it handles its more passive sections, and I think they're worth noting. In particular, I like the flashback mechanic. Picking certain choices will cause you to unlock flashbacks that elaborate upon Fang's relationship with a certain character that you can access by pressing options. Or start, I guess, if you're one of those Xbox controller users I've heard so much about. In this demo, I was able to find one during a chat with Naser that establishes both a love for dad jokes and a suggestion that Fang's exhaustion during their conversation earlier in the demo may be because Naser goes out of his way to needle them a little bit. I appreciate that. I like that little things exist that give larger insight into Fang's inner life before we took control of him. It gives the game some replay value, ensures no two playthroughs are necessarily the same. I like it. There's also something interesting I notice in reviewing my own footage and other people's. If you spend some time pondering whether or not to select a certain decision but pivot away from it, Fang may eventually say something that prevents you from picking that choice because they aren't sure it's the right way to go now. I can see how some people would take some issue with this, but honestly, I like it a lot. It's an interesting measure to ensure players act with conviction and think about their choices, and I don't think this feature is out of place within the greater context of the story. It plays with the theme of imminent doom and the consideration of the way we use our time before that point. It does some legwork to humanize Fang, it places them having anxiety, which I think is rational whether you're a young adult with uncertainty about the future, or someone with knowledge that the world will come to immediate end very soon. Same diff. It also acts as a bit of a punishment for hesitation, and I think that's a bold choice, but it reinforces larger themes, it humanizes our protagonists, it challenges the player. It gets a thumbs up from this guy, I'm pretty excited about how it may shape my playthroughs. Goodbye Volcano High features voice acting in most story related scenes. If they have it in their flashbacks, it might not have loaded for me or something. And I think personally it landed fairly well. In particular, I like Trish and Fang's voice actors, voiced by Ozioma Akaga and Lachlan Watson respectively. Trish may be short in stature, but she's titanic in passion, and I think Akaga did a lot of work in portraying her. Squirt out the streams at different speeds and angles and get this! 
rotation. So the slime streams cross midair and weave a slime net around their prey. Slime net, dude. I found Trish's on-screen moments fairly magnetic as a result. I could see how some people would be a little split on Trish, but I personally find it hard to resist characters and people that know what they love. I left the demo with a feeling of excitement at wanting to pick their brain a bit, and I think that's a good endorsement for a well-written and well-performed character. I also think Watson gives a lot to Fang. Their voice is very well matched to the character, and they give them a few little flourishes that I think are pretty endearing. I think Akaga and Watson were the performances I thought most worthy of writing home about this stage of the game, but they were all good performances overall. Nacers was nice, communicates a lot of his own insecurity. Reed was good, but Naomi too. I've seen some pushback from others about the performances of the voice actors, but if you ask me, the actors are perfectly fine, it's the direction I take issue with. Going off the demo, there are certainly a few lines I would be inclined to do a few different takes on. Hey Sib, are you playing the guitar right now? Is there some special circumstance preventing the two of you from taking your seats with the rest of the class so that we may all begin? We got an audition! For Battle of the Bands. I've heard that they finalized recording the dialogue fairly recently, so I hope they took the opportunity to polish it a little bit more. I think the most contentious topic in regards to this demo comes down to its animation, and I believe that's justified. I'm a little mousy about the idea of dunking on this game for its flaws when it's still in an incomplete state, especially when they let us know off the jump that issues are to be expected. But I also think it would be insincere to abstain from mentioning a serious problem I had with this demo in a video about it. So here comes the boom. I think it would border on journalistic malpractice to suggest that the animation, as far as we've seen or saw it in this demo, is very polished. When did this happen? Are we all getting makeovers now? I'd ask you to recall that there was a little over a month before its release in the window this demo was available. Delaying this game was without question the responsible decision, but the fact that they were even courting the idea of releasing it with such little time between demo and release is unambiguously distressing. I wouldn't fault those by thinking this inspires some pessimism writ large, especially given that the protracted release date of this game is perhaps an inexorable part of its discussion. I'm not going to claim that I'm an expert on the subject or anything either, but some parts of the animation look pretty off. The irony of it being a clear inspiration to Goodbye Volcano High is not lost on me here, but this flaw is one that the demo has in common with the original release of Life is Strange. And I love that game, I do, but you can't tell me that it didn't have jank by the bucket load. I, I think that the storm started, everything started when I found out I could rewind time. The lip sync in particular was infamously fucked in that game, but those flaws didn't really take me out of the experience because they used a couple of unique tricks to keep me comfortably distracted. The problem is that Goodbye Volcano High doesn't have that luxury because its cameras, characters, and character blocking are less dynamic. And that's not a bad thing inherently, but it does mean that the little things matter a lot more because now you can see them from a mile off. And look, I'll give credit where it's due, I think the second demo we got improved on all this stuff, but as I've said on this channel before, you don't get a second chance at a strong first impression, and as far as animation goes, this first demo met me with all the charisma of a damp handshake. This video comes off the heels of an announcement about another delay of Goodbye Volcano High. The news is disappointing, but, and I say this with love, I think its flaws, insofar as we've seen, would make it a necessary situation. The longer I've had time to marinate on this demo as a holistic experience, the more mixed on it I become, and that frustrates me. But the demo's core mechanics, its active and passive gameplay, are built on solid foundations, but my umbrage with the demo has nothing to do with the core mechanics, it's everything outside of them, really. The voice acting we've seen is good, by and large, but the direction makes certain line reads stick out like sore thumbs. The animation is unpolished and choppy at certain terms. The demo itself did not give us a lot of time with this game either, only being available to play for four days. And when you consider that this demo is coming off of a three year wait time until this point, well, that's really not ideal. And that bothers me a lot because I want this game to do well. I've had it on the brain for a while, and as an Ontario kid myself, I like showing up for Canadian productions, especially by smaller studios. Another demo has been released since I started writing this video, and it's nice to get some further insight into this game, see it receive a little bit more spit and polish. I figure I could cover videos on these demos until the cows come home, but writing a video on this demo in particular was important to me, because this game has become important to me, and I think its first public showcase since its reveal in 2020 was something worthy of note. And I've come down fairly hard on this demo in the last third, but are the flaws I mentioned in this video enough for me to be turned off from playing the game outright? No, and not at all. Uh, there are kinks to work out here, but two months can be a lot of time to smooth things over, and I have faith that the juice will be worth the squeeze. I briefly entertained the idea of doing videos like this and other demos, but I think I'm going to save my energy for the inevitable video I'd like to make when the full game becomes available. Until then, I'm just going to keep my head down and hope for the best.